Shalom, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to another lecture of The Bible Comes to Life. I would like to take this opportunity today and speak about a different topic than our usual Bible study topics. And the reason why I decided to take this route is because I've heard so many different uh, uh, approach lately uh, regarding the coronavirus that people comparing that to major plagues that we had in history, such as the Justinian plague and the Black Plague. And I decided to give our audience a little bit of a, a understanding what were those major plagues that we hear about so often in comparison to uh, coronavirus. So uh, this will be a little bit of a shorter presentation, but it will give us a little bit of understanding uh, uh, and a little bit of, of uh, uh, um, uh, relevance of what we are facing and what our ancestors had faced before us. So without further ado, let's dive in. Plagues in history. This is a picture, by the way, of the Black Plague that I decided to, uh, 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 to share with you. So what is a plague? Let us start with the definition of what is a plague. A plague uh, or uh, 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 epidemic or pandemic uh, comes from Greek, from uh, 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 the meaning of the word is over the people, meaning hurting all the people, unlike a certain disease that can attack a certain part of the population a pandemic or epidemic uh, or a plague in English will be an overall uh, 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 hurt or overall impact throughout the population. Another uh, uh, means of uh, determining a plague is the magnitude and the land scale that it covers. If it's a very small and confined area, that will be a disease. It will be a global or very large territory across different nations that will be a plague or a pandemic. Uh, the most common plagues that we had uh, in the uh, end of the 20th century, actually beginning of the 20th century, all through the 20th century into the 21st century, interestingly enough, most of those plagues were associated with influenza. If it's SARS, the swine flu, the bird flu, uh, the Spanish flu, and so on and so, and so forth, uh, the main plague that we were facing in uh, uh, the 19th century was uh, the cholera uh, uh, in terms of, of global scale. Um, a plague can be widely spread and a plague can be defined as a pandemic when it spreads over a large territory. So that is why COVID-19 is categorized as a pandemic. It's not a situation and it's not a disease. It's a pandemic because it is global hence the definition of it. Let's dive in and learn a little bit about the plagues in the Bible. I decided to show you three different plagues in the Bible, and I didn't go with the obvious of uh, the 10 plagues of Egypt. I wanted to speak about plagues that happened to the children of God, not plagues that happened to the foreigners and to, and to the Gentiles. So the first one I decided to speak about is recounted in 1 Samuel 5, uh, uh, verse 6. And this is after the battle of Eben Ezra, when the Philistine took the Ark of the Covenant, uh, God struck plague upon the Philistine cities, especially in Ashdod and Ekron uh, and Gaza. And the Philistine moved the uh, Ark of the Covenant to the city of Beit Shemesh, where it stayed there for a very long time. This is the second uh, 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 chapter that we're, we're looking at, a chapter right up to that in 1 Samuel 6, verse 19, 19 we hear about a major plague in the Jewish city of Beit Shemesh. And the main reason why there was such a major plague is because uh, it was not the resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. God was demanding to move it to a different place uh, uh, in preparation for his home, which will be the temple, which connects to that, the plague in Jerusalem. When we read 2 Samuel uh, 24, verse 15 and 16, we hear about a major plague that happened in Jerusalem and basically was supposed to destroy all of Jerusalem. And then God stopped the angel and told him that is enough. Just land at the, at the threshold of Arona the Jebusite. And when David came outside, he understood that he needs to repent. And he understood that this is the place where he needs to 
build the house of God. So these are just three plagues. There are numerous amount of plagues in the Bible. I just chose those three from uh, uh, both books, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. This is around the year 100, uh, 1, uh, 1150 BCE until the year 1000 BCE, give or take. End of Judges, Samuel and King David. Next plague, which is by far one of the worst plagues humanity ever had, is the Justinian plague, named after Emperor Justinius. This plague ravished the uh, uh, Byzantine Empire between the year 541 AD and 549 AD. So in those eight years, uh, the uh, economic power of the mightiest empire in the world basically crumbled. When we are looking at uh, 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 the plague itself, the plague started in a town of Pelesium, which is right here. This is the town of Pelesium, uh, which is in the Delta Nile. Uh, recent studies suggest that merchants from India and probably China brought the plague with them to Pelesium and from Pelesium it moved to Alexandria. And look at this plague, which is very interesting. The plague moved along the coastline. Look at this. From Alexandria to Antioch, the coastline of the uh, Eastern Aegean, the Western Aegean, uh, uh, the area of Trieste and uh, Croatia of today, Rome, uh, inland into Gaul, of course, Spain and Carthage. So what we are seeing here is the movement and the spread of the disease was done at the beginning mostly by merchants. Everything that I showed right now, these are all coastal cities that were very much uh, uh, connected in uh, trade to the rest of the world. And that was the main reason of the spread of the disease. We found several evidence of uh, the Justinian plague in Israel. We know from studies that over 16,000 people died every single day only in the city of Constantinopolis by itself. Not the entire empire, just the city of Constantinopolis. Again, we need to remember that today the world population is a few billions. Back then, the world population was maybe one billion. Actually, studies show that a lot less. The population of Israel in the time of the uh, Justinian uh, plague was almost six million people. Folks, six million people. The next time we will see six million people in the boundaries of the land of Israel, will be only after the establishment of the state of Israel and only from the 1980s. So we're talking almost 1400 years of uh, a very small population. That's how strong and impactful was uh, this plague, the Justinian plague. Uh, this inscription right over here, this is Justinian by the way, right next to him, this is an inscription that was found in a tomb uh, uh, of a guy by the name Zechariah, son of John, who died at the age of 20. This uh, 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 tombstone was found in a church in the Nabataean city of Avdat. Most of you are very well familiar with the capital of the Nabataean, Petra, the Red Rock. Avdat was the largest Nabataean city, kind of like, you know, uh, Washington versus New York. So Avdat was the New York of the Nabataean. And we see a major decline in population across the Byzantine Empire, uh, uh, a decline that caused a lot of very significant uh, changes in our uh, human history. Let's try to name just a few of, the, uh, uh, of those uh, 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 changes. And what are the direct consequences of the Justinian plague? For starters, we have a severe economic depression. In every major plague throughout history, there is a severe economic depression because people are blocking themselves in and they try not to interact with other people. Sound very familiar like coronavirus. We have seen a crumbling of the uh, uh, Byzantine army due to the dilution of, uh, uh, of the population. So from a mighty and strong empire, basically the population itself shrunk to a point that it was basically uh, almost un, uh, unable to de defend its borders. Due to that and due to the lack of taxes that pouring in from a large population, the overall taxes basically increased uh, uh, because of less people who paid those taxes. 
uh, the direct result of that was a major inflation and hunger and poverty. It's kind of like a vicious cycle that feeds itself. We have, uh, we spoke about the major reduction in population and one of the most interesting things that happened due to the, uh, 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 the outcomes of the Justinian plague is the rise of Islam. And you're gonna tell me how is exactly this has to do with the other because the Justinian plague ended at the middle of the sixth century uh, uh, AD and Islam started to appear at the at 622 AD, which is the Hijra, the, the, the flood of Muhammad from uh, 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 in, in, the, in the Arabian Peninsula. When we are looking at the map of the Byzantine Empire, we have to see a very important player or players in the overall arena. We have this green right here, this green uh, 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 areas. This is the Byzantine Empire, which is including, of course, Rome. We have the Frankish kingdom and we have the Visigoth kingdom, both barbarian nation. This is after the fall of Western Rome at the, at the end of the fifth century AD. So we have here, this light blue is right uh, 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 at the peak of the, uh, of the disease. After the uh, disease hurt so much, the Byzantine Empire, the Romans or the Byzantine basically lost these territories, Rome, Dalmatia, and of course, uh, uh, North, Northern Africa. And we have another rise of an empire called the Sassan M Empire, which was on the east side. There were the... Uh, um, the um, uh, descendants of Alexander the Great and the Persian Empire. And what happened was those two empires, both the Sassan Empire and the uh, Byzantine, uh, Byzantine Empire bash each other to death. And because of the plague, both of their power were completely diluted. And from that void, we have from the, the plains of Arabia, we have Muhammad coming up with a uh, uh, with a new religion and a new uh, um, empire called the Islamic Empire. This is the rise of Islam. And that explains how in such short period of time, from the year 622 AD until the end of the seventh century, roughly uh, 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 till the year 749 AD, when the Muslims entered all the way to Atul and Poitiers in France, all of this landscape from Israel through Egypt, North Africa, all the way into Spain and almost all the way to France, we have the Muslim empire. The entire Sassanic empire right here completely disappeared and become Muslim. A lot of this had to do with the uh, weakening of those two empires, the Byzantine on one side and the Sassan on the other side because of the Justinian plague. So we have a major, major effect on human history because of that plague. The next plague I want to talk about is the Black Plague, which we know very much about it. And it's actually, if you're gonna ask people today, what is the worst plague in human history? They will tell you the Black Plague. Although I beg to differ, and I think that the Justinian plague was actually worse than the Black Plague, there's one big difference. Uh, during the Black Plague, we had much more uh, people who are capable of reading and writing. So we have much more documentation of that plague versus the Justinian plague in the uh, sixth and seventh century AD. The Black Plague itself was actually a series of few plagues, few different uh, uh, diseases, uh, most of them associated with bubonic plague, but not just bubonic plague. Uh, started in the year 1347 uh, in the city of Genoa uh, and continued all the way to the mid 17th century. So we are talking almost 400 years of outbreaks of this, this plague all across Europe and actually all across the world. Just for, for us to get some facts, the mortality rate in Euro Europe alone was between 75 and 200 million people. Uh, sorry, Europe and Asia, 275 to 200 million people, anywhere between 25% and 60% of the total population was killed and died because of the Black Plague. Uh, uh, many people don't speak about it, but in China alone, in China alone, 35 million people perish due to the Black Plague. 
How did the Black Plague arrive to us? Very similar to the Justinian Plague, what happened, what happened was that traders uh, brought the disease on boats. There is another assumption that says that when the Mongol army besieged a genuine outpost on the Black Sea, they used to catapult their uh, 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 infected bodies of their warriors with the plague into the city walls and basically infected the entire population. And the refugees of that city that fled into Genoa brought the disease with them. One, this assumption brought uh, uh, an, a, a notion which is called quarantine. We all know it very, very, very well from COVID-19. Quarantine comes from the word quarenta in Italian, which means 40 days. The idea was that when a vessel sails into any Italian city at the beginning, later on, almost every European city, they have to wave uh, 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 a, uh, uh, a yellow flag. When they arrive to the port, they need to have a yellow flag on uh, their mass and wait for 40 days. The idea is for the crew not to mingle with the local population. And if any one of the crew is sick, they're gonna bring the plague with them. So for 40 days, the vessel used to dock at the, uh, the port. With not, they were not allowed to go in or out uh, at the boat and they had a yellow flag. If there was a case of any kind of a plague on the boat, they used to raise the black flag and they were not allowed to disembark the boat. If there was no, uh, uh, no cases of disease, then they raised the white flag and then they could enter into the city and trade. Hence the word quarantine. When we are asked to be quarantined, that's from the Black Plague. Another thing that we see, uh, uh, which is very interesting in lieu of the, uh, of the Black Plague is the change in understanding of medicine. What happened was during the Black Plague, people start to understand the idea of vaccination and the overall uh, uh, um, uh, mass vaccination. Vaccination, not in terms of syringe. They understood that people who died and people who lived next to the disease, that they did not uh, 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 acquire the disease are probably self-immune against the disease. There's actually a very interesting story of a village in England that basically quarantined themselves and they decided to die in that village in order and, and not to not to leave the village and to spread the disease. Interestingly enough, many people of that village actually developed self-immune against the Black Plague and uh, their descendants are living here among us until today. That understanding that the human body, some of the human body, some people can develop a, their own vaccination started at the Black Plague. Another thing which is very interesting is the change in understand of medicine. Up until the Black Plague, idea of sterilization and idea of uh, keeping a distance was not so much in common news, at least not that we know of. Again, we don't know much about the Justinian Plague, but from what we know, uh, the, uh, uh, the way to handle the Black Plague at the beginning was very different than at the end. This is a very famous story, a very famous picture of a doctor uh, walking with this beacon. You can see that in many, many, many medieval uh, drawings. This is a doctor or basically a person that will take away uh, uh, the bodies of the deceased, not necessarily a doctor. This beacon right over here was made out of leather and inside of it were a uh, uh, um, blend of spices to basically take away the stench of, uh, of, of death, of, of the disease. Uh, later on, it was understood that these spices, some of them actually helped to filter uh, uh, the bacteria and to, to, to filter the germs of the disease. But the idea was uh, against the smell. It's interesting that today in COVID-19, we understand the importance of, uh, uh, of the mask, but the idea of the mask was born again in the time of the Black Plague. When we see different drawings from Europe uh, during the uh, uh, medieval times, we can see the harsh impact of the plague on the local population. For example, the city of Lucca in, uh, uh, in Italy was basically completely gone. The entire city was gone. When we look at maps dated uh, to the beginning of the 15th century, 
we see major parts of Europe that are marked as ruins. This is not because of a military campaign. It is because of the plague. This is because of the Black Plague. Another interesting fact that happened during the Black Plague is the rise of anti-Semitism. Very interesting. When you look at the number of death and casualties among the Jewish population, percentage-wise, they're about the same as the Christian population. However, because there were much few Jews back then in, in Europe, it seems to uh, uh, the local inhabitants, the non-Jews, that the Jews are poisoning the wells because the Jews were a little bit less affected than the overall population, especially due to two main reasons. Number one, Jews did not go to church. And in the medieval times, we need to understand that the, uh, uh, the first place that people go to seek for refuge is not a hospital or a clinic, but mostly to the clergy. The, 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 we are talking at the, at the time that the world was, the Christian world was, uh, the Christian world, I'm sorry, was Catholic. It's before the Reformation. So people used to go to the church to get uh, uh, healed and ask for repentance, uh, 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 to ask for, to be repent and then to be healed. Um, so Jews did not go to the church. And another thing that was very interesting is the personal hygiene. In the Bible, we have two major commands. The first one will be to wash your body. That's baptism. Jews baptize themselves at least once a week before Shabbat, at least at the minimum. And also the second command is to wash your hands. Every Jew has to wash his hands, his or her hands, before meal. Today, we know how important it is to wash our hands, again, because of COVID. We wash our hands at least 20 seconds. This is something that God uh, commanded us way back in the desert after the Exodus. This is not something that was uh, uh, invented by the CDC for COVID-19. And what happened was that because of this act of washing the hands, the Jewish population was actually less affected than the Christian population. The outcome of that were a wave of major, major persecutions against the Jewish population in Western Europe. And they fled it from Western Europe, from the Rhineland, uh, uh, next to Speyer, Magenta, and Worms. They moved to Portugal and to Spain. And uh, they dwelled over there because at that time, the half of the part of the, of the uh, Iberian Peninsula was Muslim. So they found refuge among the, uh, the, uh, the kingdom of Andalusia. And uh, uh, at that time, both of uh, Portugal and Spain were on rise and they needed the educated uh, uh, Jews to come in and help them to build their economy. Interestingly enough, about 150 years after that, the Jews were expelled from uh, Spain and Portugal and settled in mostly the Netherlands, England, the United States, and Turkey. And it's interesting to see how they brought their knowledge in commerce and in wealth and brought them to those new hosting uh, uh, nations. But this is a topic for a completely different lecture. I think one of the most interesting uh, uh, consequences of the Black Plague, and I, I, connect, I connect that to the Black Plague, is the birth of uh, the Protestant church. As we said before, people seek, uh, seek refuge within the walls of the Catholic church and they couldn't find it. Uh, uh, many of the churches would not even let people get in to the, uh, to the churches because they were afraid of mass spread of the disease. And when uh, Martin Luther uh, uh, saw what's going on in the Catholic church and the complete this connection between that regime back then, I'm talking in the 16th century, the disconnection between the Catholic regime of the day to the local population, uh, Martin Luther uh, basically started to get away, drift away from uh, the Catholic church. One of the main reasons why he went to the Jewish population at the beginning was again, because he knew they were persecuted a lot by the Catholics. Again, Many of it has to do with the Black Plague. I strongly believe that if it was not, if we did not have the Black Plague, we would not have had uh, the Reformation. So it is interesting to see how a disease completely changes uh, uh, not just uh, the way of life and the way of, of civilization, but also uh, uh, under changes the, our understanding of the Word of God. 
If you have any questions whatsoever or any remarks about this presentation, I will be more than happy uh, to read and to hear and to answer. You can uh, contact me either at uh, uh, um, on Facebook, just leave a message uh, or a uh, remark after this presentation, or you can email me directly at info at tbctl.com. I would love to hear any thought that you have or any remarks that you have and to open this to a discussion. I would love to uh, uh, use this platform for us to better understand what is a pandemic and what pandemics can do to, hu to humankind, to mankind. Thank you so much for uh, watching this presentation and I hope to hear from you very, very soon. Shalom and blessing from the Ella Valley in Israel.